Hey guys, so I went on Invisible Shackles and I was like, I'm getting on <laughs> the main page and I'm making a video like right now, so go on there. I'll be there in two seconds. I think I said two minutes actually. And then the landscapers were um, pulled up next door and started making so much noise. You never would have heard me. So I had to drive to a parking lot down the street. So we're all settled in a parking lot down the street, but I'm like five minutes instead of two minutes. I don't think you guys are going to care. Anyway, so all kidding aside, we have a really important topic that I want to discuss with you guys today. And I'm basing it off of a public a PSA, a public service announcement. We always call like our announcements and um, just things that we want to get across to our members that are really important. Um, it was posted on the Invisible Shackles page this morning based on something that had happened to one of our members who I am not aware of who this was that it happened to. So know that this is not judgment towards anybody. Know that this is, this advice is based off of, as always, my own experience as well as experience of people that I've seen go through similar things in my day-to-day, -day, everyday life on the outside, but also with our members because I've been um, coaching prison wives since 2012. Um, so I've seen and I've heard a lot and a lot of them are a lot of things that people go through and struggles that they experience are thematic. So there's like a theme that kind of is um, runs through a lot of the issues that we have and here's one of them. So I'm going to read the public service announcement that Megan wrote. She writes all of our public service announcements and it was posted on the Invisible Shackles page. It was written so beautifully that I'm going to read it to you word for word. I have it on my iPad in front of me and then we're going to talk through it and I'll share some experiences with you that I went through, that um, some tips that I have and also a really awesome tip that we got from one of the members who I believe she said posted it on the app, but um, we'll go through this one thing at a time. So let's start by me reading Megan's PSA that she posted on the Invisible Shackles page. She said, hey lovelies, after speaking to a good friend of mine on the phone this morning, I feel that I need to share this with you. This particular post is mostly directed to the wives and girlfriends of the group, but it applies to all of us. As prison wives, we're stronger than most of society. We're stronger than the stigma. Mm, can I have some thumbs up for that? We're stronger than the circumstance. However, we are not invincible. The truth of the matter is that our husbands, boyfriends, fiancés are not home to protect us and the world is a seriously messed up place. Trust your gut. If your gut tells you that a certain situation is not safe or could be an issue, don't do it. Or have a friend with you. For example, don't go to a, tattoos, a tattoo artist's home alone without another woman there to back you up, or even better, a guy friend. Don't go, alone, don't go alone to bars at night. Don't go walking around downtown at midnight by yourself. If there has been any kind of intimacy or attraction or feelings for an individual, do not go alone to bars at night. Don't go walking around... Oh, for some reason this went this posted twice, but don't go walking in on my iPad because I copied and pasted it. Don't go walking around downtown at midnight by yourself. If there's been any kind of intimacy for an individual, don't, <clears throat> don't go hang out with them by yourself. These situations put us at risk even more so than the rest of society and should be avoided. Remember that past consent does not mean continued consent. I'm going to say that again. It's so important. Remember that past consent does not mean continued consent. Block men that won't stop trying. I am tongue tied as always. Block men that won't stop trying to be detrimental to you. Also know that it is never your fault. No means no. Even if you are drinking at a party, even if you are alone with an ex hanging out, which you should not be. Even if you cry to your best friend and he hugs you and he wants you to take it further, it is never, ever, ever your fault. Your man cannot protect you and he will feel responsible if anything happens to you. That guilt does not need to be added to the scale. Avoid it at all costs. We love all of you and want your health and safety and want you health and... Who... We love you. <laughs> I can't read. And this is not a funny topic. I'm sorry, you guys. We love all of you and want your health and safety first. Stay strong. Okay. So 
I'm gonna tell you an experience that happened to me actually just this week and then um, an experience that happened to me a couple years ago and then we're going to talk through some points. So just this week, I have this coworker. So I, the job that I'm at was um, with the same company that I was hired by when I was fresh out of college, very first job out of college. I worked there for a year and a half um, in a different position. Then I left for five or six years to pursue something else. And then I came back 12 years ago and I've been there since actually 13 at this point, but in a different position. So when I was there the first time, I was 22 or 23 years old. I was clueless. I was probably partly crazy. I was in like a party phase. So I said, and I did really stupid things. And there was this, there's a little boy over there. So I want to close the window because this is kind of like a harsh topic. But, um, there's one of the sales guys that, uh, it was in a group of friends and he is still there all these years later too. And he told me the other day, and he's kind of like hit on me on and off throughout the years. And I've made it very, very blatant and obvious that, um, I'm not interested. And then a couple times I blocked his number because he like teeters on that line. He's never crossed over the line, but he teeters on that line. So the other day he said to me, he's like, you know, uh, and then we won't talk for a couple months. So this was like the first time I'd seen him in a few months. And he says to me, he's like, I've been intrigued with you since you were the little girl when you started here and you told me, mind you, I was a crazy bitch. He told me, um, you're the best bitch that would ever happen to a guy. So like, blah, blah, blah. He goes in that always stuck, stuck with me. And now like, I have to crack you. Like you sit here, you're the only girl that's ever done this to me. You make me shake my head because I've never been able to crack that. I was like, seriously crazy. But I had to, he's like, when, cause I, the reason I started is cause I told him my 40th birthday is in a few weeks and because we were in a conversation and he was like, I'm taking you out, blah, blah, blah. So I had to put a stop to that really, really, really fast. Okay. Let's go to a different situation and then we're going to piece them together. So this was like the first or second year I was back in touch with Adam. I met this guy at the gym I was going to at the time and he intrigued me. Right. So we kind of flirted a little bit. I was flirting on the line of inappropriateness. And so never did I ever cross that line. However, I never divulged if I was in a relationship or single. And I would always go out with like my girlfriend that I went to the gym with and a guy that she was talking to. Now this was one of his friends. So we'd go out in a group of four. Like I kind of set it up and I never ever divulged that I was in a relationship because I enjoyed, frankly, the intent, the attention, right? I was young. I was immature. I was a little bit, um, insecure, although that fake insecurity of like, I'm the best bitch you'll ever have and nobody's going to ever top me. So you could go cheat on me and do whatever you want because you're not going to find somebody like me. Everybody knows that attitude. When I told my sisters that story, they're like, were you the original Sammy sweetheart? I was like, I was the original crazy idiot, but move on from that. So I let him on. And then we go, and I always told myself I wasn't doing anything wrong because Adam's away. I do not agree with this theory, you guys. This is just how I was thinking back then because Adam's away. So if he was here, I wouldn't be acting like this, right? But he's not here. So I was just enjoying time out. I wasn't letting anything bad happen. That's wrong. So we all go out for my birthday at a bar at the beach, um, Jersey shore, like very much like that scenario. And he's flirting with me and I'm dancing with him, never in my head crossing a line. Well, then he asks like my, my girlfriend that I was hanging out with, she was hanging out with his friend. So I, he was kind of like the guy I would hang out with when we were all hanging together. And he asked her about like, you know, if he can make move over and he's like, you know, she, she goes, you know, she has a boyfriend, right? And he got mad rightfully. He got mad and I actually had to leave my own birthday get together because I was scared because he was angry and he was mad. Now, nobody should ever get to that point where they put you in a position where you're scared for your safety. However, I have to defend him in this one. Not that he got to that level, but I escalated that situation. I was not honest with him from the beginning. I put myself in a situation where you know, had I gone out with him and let's say my friend and the guy that she was hanging out with went off into another room and she left me in a room alone with him and he tried to make a move. It is wrong if I say no and he continues, but I can't fault him for trying and then pushing him away and being mad. Like I have a boyfriend when I'm leading him on. So I think that it's really hard for us because we, we in this position are starved for attention, especially our sisters 
and our brothers, but this is more of a woman thing. We um, feed off of that attention. We feel, you know, and I think sometimes it makes us feel insecure. And so for my sisters who are a little on the insecure side, as I was with that fake confidence, we tend to string people along and maybe not give them the whole truth or maybe, you know, let them make flirty comments and giggle them off instead of putting people in their place. And I'm not saying you have to do that in a nasty way, but if you aren't firm and from the beginning, don't tell somebody, listen, I'm not single, then you're putting yourself at risk. If you entertain flirting, you're putting yourself at risk. And it wasn't always obviously that I'm like this. The reason that I shared those stories with you is because I want to show you the difference between between 22 year old me, 31 year old me, and now almost 40 year old me. 21 year old me was an idiot who had fake confidence and would turn around and be like, I'm the best bitch you'll ever meet, which was stupid. 31 year old me was, and that's like late bloomer status because I shouldn't have been this immature at 31, but it was like, I'm not doing anything wrong. Adam's not here. I'm just going to have fun. I'm not going to tell this guy that I'm in a relationship because I'm not hooking up with him. I don't want to hook up with him. I just enjoy the attention. Like I still got it. It's nice to know you still got it. And you should get that attention from your husband because that's why you're in that relationship. And if he doesn't fulfill that and make you feel like you still got it, then you need to reevaluate why you're in that relationship. Yes, attention feels good, but that's short lived. And excuse the phrase, you guys, but if you lead them on, I did this, okay, with that situation with that guy, you're a cock tease. I'm sorry to be so vulgar and to be so blatant, blatant, but don't be a cock tease. Like you have to be, um, be, be firm and please know that I am not talking to or at the person that this happened to because I don't know who it is and I don't know the situation but I know that by leading somebody on and stringing them along and you know hanging out with somebody that you used to sleep with think about if you were the one locked up and if your husband boyfriend fiance was hanging out with their ex or hanging out with their old hookup or going to clubs late at night and grinding all over women and you know that be is that a, how would you feel if you were the one in that situation okay I'm rambling I do have notes I swear um so basically yes I asked can you blame the guy for trying to make a move if you're leading him on like I did with Danny or uh, um don't be wishy-washy or give mixed messages because you like the attention. It does feel good. We could all admit it feels good. We've all been in that situation because especially for us, we haven't received that kind of attention in so long and it feels really good, but that never, ever, 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 ever ends well. It does not end well. It won't end well. If you're stringing somebody along and teasing them, you're only setting yourself up for a situation where something bad is going to happen and the very best case scenario is that they get pissed off but there's a lot of really really bad case scenarios and worst case scenarios that like Megan said in the PSA we love you too much and we care about your health and safety we don't want you guys to put yourself in those situations so going out at midnight alone if you don't have to, why are you doing that? Going out to clubs by yourself without a girlfriend at the very least by your side. Going over guys' houses, especially people who you used to hook up with. You know, like like Megan said in the PSA, because you consented once does not mean that was a blanket consent forever. But sometimes in those situations, lines get blurred and the man thinks that he can make moves, which is absolutely wrong. And that is absolutely sexual assault if he tries anything. However, sexual assault will not happen from that person if you don't put yourself in that situation. Obviously, horrible things happen. And I hope this is not triggering anything for anybody. But yeah, Lasanne said nothing good happens after midnight. Oh my gosh, Adam's like best friend's father used to say that all the time, and it's the God's honest truth. So, um, just if you just be really, really, really careful of protecting yourself and being careful of the situations that you're putting yourself in. I mean, I have another one that I'm debating if I should even talk about it. It's not a sexual thing, but I. How do I say this without like incriminating myself on video? Not that I did anything wrong. I didn't, but, um, I don't want to throw this person 
under the bus who would not be watching this because she's my real life best friend. But you know, we're going to, sorry for the tease. I put myself in a really bad situation. I didn't know I put myself in a really bad situation and I told Adam about it. Adam doesn't get pissed at me, but he got very, very, very concerned and was like, you really should never do that again. Ever. Do you understand what it feels like for me to have to be in here and worry about you putting yourself in that situation? That's what I want you guys to do. Think about the consequences of putting yourselves in those situations and reverse engineer if you were in his shoes, how would that feel? Because it's really going to be hard for you to have to go tell him if something really bad happened and you put yourself in that situation or opposite, if you choose not to tell him because you don't want to start a crazy mess going to be really hard for you to have to uh, keep that in. Okay. And I'm not saying that this also, this happens in situations you're putting yourself in for you. Don't put yourself in harm's way for your loved one. So for example, I had a girlfriend who was like, when I used to take off visits all winter to not go see Adam because the weather was too hard, it was too bad. She was like, I don't know how you do that. I just get in the car and go. Well, the thing is, I'm not putting myself in a situation where I'm risking my life driving in a few feet of snow down Route 80 where there's no guardrails to see him for one visit. Am I still there? It just disconnected for me, but it came back. Am I still here? Can somebody give me like a comment or an emoji? A emoji? I don't know why I'm so tongue-tied today. Can somebody let me know if it's still going? Are you guys still there? I still see people are on. Can somebody let me know if you're still there? Can somebody comment or emoji and let me know that you're still there? I don't see anyone commenting or emojiing. But I do see people joining. Ooh, can somebody tell me if you're still there? I'm kind of scared that you're not here. I'm going to give you guys a second. Good. Okay. Okay. Thank you, whoever emojied me. Emojied me. Oh, my God. So don't put yourself in a bad situation. I'd rather miss one visit because of the weather than miss the rest of visits that he has in there because I got myself hurt or put myself in a situation where I can't drive anymore or God forbid in the grave because I put myself in harm's way. Think maturely, you guys. Think in a way where it's okay. It, like The world is not going to end if you miss a visit one weekend or miss, you know, I go once a month, one month, or I take off usually three months in the winter. World's not going to end. You want, you're in this for the long haul, act like it. Don't put yourself in harm's way. Also, Let's say you're putting something off like you find a lump in your breast, but you can't afford to go to the doctor because you're giving him money or spending all your money going to visit. That's putting yourself in harm's way. That's putting yourself in a dangerous situation. You have to prioritize your health and your safety. Um, don't send him money if you don't have it. Don't, um, what else? I'm like all jumbled up. If he wants you to go someplace dangerous to run an errand for him, say no. If he wants you to um, bring something in there, say no. Then contact one of our admins so she can help like coach you through that one. Um, if he wants you to go out at midnight to meet somebody, to meet someone for whatever reason, don't do it. Don't do things you can't afford. Don't do things that'll make you put you in harm's way. That's it. Don't risk your life. Don't risk your safety. Don't risk getting arrested for anybody. Um, so one on one of the girls, I think she said that this was posted on the app, but one of the girls said the best line ever that I typed out because I want you guys to hear this. She said, when somebody asks you the question that we all have gotten at some point, like, so what are you going to do for your husband? And like, what are you going to do without your husband until he comes home? Like, what are you going to do? What's he going to do for you? And she said, you don't always have to make that a sexual thing, although they make it sexual. You can think on your feet and flip it. And so, so her response was, hire a plumber to fix my plumbing, hire a roofer to fix the roof, hire a handyman to hang up pictures that I can't hang or do the things that I can't learn to do by my, to learn or do by myself. The answer does not always have to be sexual because husbands are in there for other, husbands are there, I'm sorry, for other reasons 
other than just intimacy. Turn it around on people who say things like that to you. Think of the other reasons you're married to someone or in a relationship with someone. It's another way to show you're strong. Yes, 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 and yes, and more yeses. Because that is mature, that is confident, and that puts somebody who's being a jerk in his place. If you say, I going to take care of me. And if I can't fix the plumbing, I will hire a plumber. If I can't fix something or hang a picture, I will hire a handyman. I don't need my husband for that. I don't need you for that. I don't need my husband just for sex. So get a life, you dirty creep and get out of mine. I think that's all I have. Yes, Rebecca. Yes, yes, yes. I'm sorry if he respected you, he wouldn't do those things. So I have a whole bunch of videos on that topic. I just wanted to kind of address it here because we're talking about protecting yourself, but that's like that, like him, your husband asking you to do things or put you in bad situations. Let's hope nobody ha has to deal with that right now or anymore, but I have tons of videos. You can look through the old Facebook videos. I've talked about that a whole bunch of times. There's been tons of posts on the page a whole bunch of times. Um, my old YouTube videos talked about that a whole bunch of times because unfortunately that's something that happens. And that happened a lot to like in the beginning with our MWI members who discovered that they were being played. So I don't want to make this video about that, but this video is, I just wanted to touch on that because overall it's about protecting yourself keeping yourself out of harm's way and like it was I was really trying to zero in on not flirting not flirting with disaster because you feel like you want attention from a man because it feels so good because that was really like glaring in my life when that rep at work came back into my life and the whole point of adding that story and I don't think I finished this thought before because I got uh, thrown off but 23 year old me was like I'm confident, but I really wasn't. 31 year old me was flirting with disaster because I just wanted to have a good time and I like the way that attention felt, but I really wasn't going to cross a line that I had made in my own head, but I never told him what that line was. And then almost 40 year old me is like, look, I'm in a relationship. I am very happy. I appreciate the compliment, but let's keep it moving. And so I want you guys to learn from my nearly 20 years of mistakes and and look, let's try to get to like that respect factor in our lives. And you know what? A simple thing you could do, even if you're not married, go to the store. You can go to Claire's. You can go anywhere. Go on Amazon and get a cheap ring and you can wear a ring. Doesn't matter if you're just, just a girlfriend. Doesn't matter if you're just, if you're anything, just wear a ring if you want to. Because even if like a lot of people says, oh, that makes them hit on you more. But at least it's like a weapon of defense where you can be like, I'm married. Leave me alone. And even if like you're out at a bar and somebody sees you from a distance and somebody's being a creep and you could be like, I'm married. And then that could be like a signal to like some of your friends or somebody there to help you out. So believe me, been there, done it. I used to have friends that would get engagement rings, like cheap ones from Claire's and wear them to clubs just because they didn't want to be, they were single, but they didn't want to be harassed to guy, by guys. So do your thing, you guys protect yourself. Um, get, get a like you dirty creep. Yes, Candace. Sometimes I get lost and I say weird things. Um, I'm going to use that handyman line. I, when I, when I read that handyman line, I was like, can you please reach out to that woman that posted that? And we need her on the team. And she was already on the team. Like, I was like, well, that's why I love you. Duh. So I have to get back to work. I'm late getting back from my lunch break. Um, and I actually had a video on confidence and how to build self confidence teed up a whole bunch of weeks ago that I made a, like a part one. And that was going to be the part two. And I teased about it. And I never got a chance to make it because I got distracted with some Q&A questions that were really important and some like in the moment things that needed to be addressed on video. So I think this is a really good reminder for me to go back and make that video for you guys. So I'm going to do that. And your man will love. Yes. And your man will love that show of commitment. Yes, that is so smart. And you, you're going to feel better about yourself because I'm going to leave you with this. What you put out there in life is what you're going to get back. So if you're putting out that you're... Um, not doing anything wrong, but in your head, you know, you're crossing a line, even though like you're pushing the line over. So maybe you're not crossing it in your own head, but you know, the line is way further to the edge than it should be. You're doing something wrong and you know it. If you're flirting with somebody, but not telling them that you're in a relationship, flirting to get something you want, you're putting out there that you're a devious person. You're putting out there that you're potentially a cheater, not saying that you're going to do something. And I understand why people do it. I've been there and I've done it. But if you live within your own value system, then that's what you're going to get 
back in your life. So whatever your value system is, live within it, but don't put yourself in a situation where you can get hurt. That's it. I will be back with the confidence video soon. I just have to go re re review my notes, add anything, and then figure out a day to do it. But you guys, keep staying strong, keep loving strong. Keep supporting one another through this journey because you're one day closer to it all being behind you. Lots of love from my heart to yours and lots of love and um, thoughts of health and happiness and safety from the whole entire SPWF volunteer team to yours because I wasn't the one who came up with this PSA today. That was from the team who was helping a member who had gone through an issue where she was... Um, she didn't purposely put herself in harm's way, but it just happened. And that's what this arose out of. So you guys just keep protecting yourself. And if you have situations where you feel iffy about it and you're like, but I really want to go comment, you can comment and send it to the inbox on this page and we will post it for you anonymously. If you feel like people are going to bash you, which they don't, our members are so, so, so good about that. Um, oh, you're welcome, sweetie. So you guys, I will see you in the next one. Oh, good one, Megan. Don't do anything that you wouldn't do in front of your man. Love that.